nightmares from the depth. The Hatteras Island ferry groaned against the churning waves, its rusted hull wailing like a tortured soul. Tourists huddled together, seeking warmth in the biting wind, oblivious to the chilling truth whispered by the old fisherman. Some storms bring more than rain, child. They bring nightmares dredged from the depths of the Atlantic, and they find their haven on the lonely shores of North Carolina. His words, laced with salt and regret, hung heavy in the air, momentarily silencing the chatter. But the allure of the island, its wild beauty, and tales of untouched wilderness proved stronger. Laughter soon replaced the unease, washing away the fisherman's cryptic warning like sandcastles beneath a crashing wave. The tempest escalated in ferocity, and the ferry bucked, its motor gasping out erratic strangled sounds akin to a suffocating wheeze. A wave of dread surged through the passengers, their complexions mirroring the ashen hues of the roiling sea. Lurid violet lightning cleaved the heavens above, revealing a towering wave that seemed to claw its way up from the ocean's abyss, its peak resembling a gaping maw studded with serrated edges. The collision was marrow-shaking. The ferry convulsed in response before tilting. Seawater swelled like an apparitional flood. Terrified shrieks filled the air, only to be devoured by the gale's bellowing cry. Amidst this pandemonium, a hatch burst open, spewing not just seawater, but also something far more menacing. Inky tendrils erupted from within, coiling around unsuspecting ankles and dragging them into the tumultuous darkness below. The screams were abruptly cut off and replaced by an unnerving gurgling noise, the ocean itself feasting on their fear. The remaining passengers huddled together on the teetering deck, watched the tendrils pulsate with an unnatural luminescence. Its bodies twisted and warped into monstrous forms, their appendages morphing into glowing green eyes, emanating an eerie flame. A colossal figure rose from below, vaguely humanoid yet impossibly large. Its many burning eyes scanned across the deck, sending chills down spines already slick with terror. It spoke. Its voice was a cacophony of whispers and roars that reverberated through the stormy chaos. Welcome, children, it croaked in a voice reminiscent of nails scraping against bone. Your fear and despair sustain us. Now you will become part of this storm forever bound to the ravenous depths of the Atlantic. As the creature lunged, its tendrils snaking toward the remaining survivors, a horrifying truth was revealed. The storm wasn't a mere force of nature. It was a malevolent being to which they had unwittingly offered themselves as sacrifices. The Hatteras Island Ferry, once a beacon of adventure and possibility, now lay at the bottom of the sea, a graveyard for horrors dredged up from the depths. Some storms bring more than just rain. They deliver the ravenous whispers of the deep, and on North Carolina's desolate shores, nightmares find their sanctuary. Cape Fear's Fury. The storm raged outside, waves crashing against the lighthouse like angry fists. Inside, the flickering candlelight danced on our weathered faces, our eyes filled with a chilling fear. Legends spoke of a vengeful spirit trapped within the lighthouse, roused by the fury of Cape Fear storms. As the wind howled and the waves threatened to breach the walls, we knew we weren't facing just the storm. We were facing the wrath of a legend come to life. Disbelief had always been my shield, a bulwark against the whispers of old seafarers. Yet, as the inky darkness around us pulsated with life and the air prickled with an electric tension, even my hardened cynicism faltered. Beside me, Thomas, the Greenhorn Apprentice, clung to his lantern as though it was his only lifeline. His knuckles strained from the terror gripping him. The tempest outside reached its zenith. A thunderous boom echoed through our bones, while a titanic wave crashed into the lighthouse's foundation, causing it to shudder like a cornered beast. Then came a sound that defied all logic, a sorrowful wail ricocheting off the stone walls that left us frozen in our tracks. The eerie howl swelled into a guttural bellow accompanied by the jarring noise of metal scraping against rock. The iron door at the lighthouse's base, sealed shut for decades, burst open. An arctic gust swept through our sanctuary, extinguishing our feeble sources of light and plunging us into darkness. Panic gnawed at our sanity as we fumbled for lanterns. Their feeble flames cast monstrous silhouettes on the walls while an icy fog rolled in, carrying with it a spectral wail intermingled with whispers of ancient curses. A ghostly figure took form within the freezing mist, morphing and billowing like smoke trapped in a bottle. It was Captain Vance, former keeper of this lighthouse his visage twisted by eternal anger, 
and eyes aflame with supernatural fury. His voice grated against our ears, accusing us of trespassing upon his eternal resting place. Thomas's fear overwhelmed him. He dropped his lantern, shattering it into pieces, plunging us further into darkness. The specter lunged toward us, sending waves of frosty dread coursing through our veins. We were tossed against the frigid stone walls, disoriented and terrified. I scrambled for my lantern, striking the flint until a spark ignited the wick. The light revealed the specter advancing with solidifying form and tangible rage. Yet amidst this terror, a spark of defiance ignited within me. This was not just a vengeful spirit, it was an embodiment of nature's fury. Recalling the legend, I seized a weather-beaten log, remnants of a shipwreck from years ago. With adrenaline fueling my resolve, I swung at the phantom. The log passed through but seemed to disrupt its form momentarily, causing it to falter and shriek in confusion. Seizing this momentary respite, I grabbed Thomas and we ascended toward the lantern room via the spiral staircase. Our pursuer's cries echoed hauntingly behind us. Upon reaching our refuge, I slammed the heavy door shut, locking it with trembling hands. The specter hammered against it, its form writhing in frustration. This room was guarded by powerful protections put in place by multiple generations of keepers who were entrusted with the lighthouse's secrets. The tempest continued unabated for another hour before finally calming down. The specter faded away, leaving behind its chilling cries as the waves receded. As dawn broke painting the sky with hues of orange and gold, we found ourselves alive but traumatized. Our once sturdy sanctuary stood defiant, yet scarred like us. We left Cape Fear soon after carrying with us memories that would forever haunt us. But unbeknownst to us, we had disturbed something far more sinister than Captain Vance's spirit. Something lay dormant within those weathered walls, waiting for more unsuspecting souls to unleash its true wrath. The Blue Ridge Blues. The fog clung to the Blue Ridge Mountains like a shroud, obscuring the jagged peaks and twisting the ancient trees into grotesque shapes. The banjo music, once melancholic and haunting, now sounded discordant, its melody laced with a chilling despair. We had ventured too deep into the mountains, seeking the source of the music, unaware that the blues it played were a prelude to a far more terrifying symphony. John, the seasoned hiker, scoffed at the locals' warnings about the haunted holler. Willow, the ever-optimistic photographer, saw adventure in the unknown. I, ever the pragmatist, felt an unsettling unease crawling up my spine with each step deeper into the mist. The music grew louder, the mournful twang punctuated by the rhythmic creak of rocking chairs. The air grew thick, the dense fog heavy with the scent of damp earth and something else metallic and primal. Then, silence. The sudden absence of sound was more terrifying than the music, leaving us adrift in a sea of calm. Willow's gaze snagged on a subtle stir of motion, an abandoned rocking chair, oscillating in a solitary rhythm on an unoccupied veranda, its stark outline a sharp contrast against the foggy backdrop. Intrigue, as enticing as a mermaid's call, drew her nearer. John and I trailed behind, an icy ball of apprehension churning in our stomachs. As we neared, the porch groaned under some unseen weight. The rocking chair stilled abruptly before tipping forward, disgorging its invisible occupant onto the worn-out planks below. A spine-chilling scream tore through the thickening fog, succeeded by a bone-rattling laughter that reverberated off the surrounding peaks, sending goosebumps racing across our skin. Fear gnawed at our resolve as we spun around to escape only to find that the once benign fog had hardened into impenetrable barriers. We were ensnared, helpless victims in a perverse game conducted by unseen puppeteers. Shadowy figures flickered at the periphery of our sight, morphing into grotesque forms. The laughter rang out again, closer now, accompanied by the sinister rasp of claws scraping against wood. The rocking chairs began their eerie dance once more. Their rhythmic creaking provided a grim accompaniment to our impending doom. Suddenly, from within the dense fog emerged a figure, skeletal and emaciated with eyes ablaze with an unholy fire. It strummed a banjo, its bony fingers coaxing out notes that thrummed with malevolent intent. The melody transformed from sorrowful to terrifying, warping and distorting reality itself. John fell to his knees, his false bravado crumbling like dust while Willow's tear-streaked face turned toward freedom only to be seized by an invisible hand, her terrified shriek swallowed whole by the encroaching fog. I remained paralyzed, the music gnawing at my nerves. Then came a voice, hoarse and ancient, 
whispering in my ear, join the dance, child, become part of the symphony. The darkness swooped in, and the music swelled to a deafening crescendo. I realized then that resistance was pointless. I was about to become the chilling finale of this mountainous melody. As the fog enveloped me, and the banjo's haunting tune faded, I found myself drawn into an eternal dance within the haunted hollow. Another spirit devoured by the mountain's insatiable craving for despair. The Blue Ridge Mountains stood shrouded in mist and silence, its secrets veiled, biding its time until another unsuspecting soul would be tempted by its haunting blues, a melody that promised adventure but delivered a chilling abyss. Croatan Shadows Moonlight filtered through the ancient pines of Croatan Forest, casting grotesque shadows on the moss-covered ground. The air hung heavy with the scent of pine needles and something else, a metallic tang that sent shivers along my spine. We shouldn't have been here, not after the whispers started, not after the warnings about the things that lurked beneath the whispering pines. Our youthful audacity, stoked by tales of arcane rites and concealed riches spun around the campfire, had overruled reason. Now, as we found ourselves disoriented and increasingly cut off from civilization, that audacity soured into a dread so potent it churned our stomachs. Every rustle of foliage, every snap of a branch, set our hearts pounding like war drums in our chests. The metallic scent grew more pronounced, underscored by a steady thumping that seemed to resonate from the earth itself. We blundered into a glade where an imposing stone altar dominated the center, its surface glistening with a thick substance that reeked of copper. Primitive symbols were etched into its surface. They pulsed with an otherworldly light that made our skin crawl. Then they appeared. Tall figures materialized from the gloom, skeletal silhouettes with eyes like smoldering coals in the blackness. Their bony digits ended in primitive talons that scraped against the stone altar as they chanted in guttural tones that reverberated through the clearing. A paralyzing fear took hold of me, icy and unyielding. I have no recollection of fleeing, of tearing through underbrush while thorns lacerated our clothes or hearing their raspy breaths close behind us. All I remember is bone-rattling laughter ringing out long after we had staggered free from the forest's grasp, the metallic scent clinging to us like an unwanted souvenir of our encounter with those who dwell beneath the whispering pines. They didn't capture us, not then anyway, yet their whispers pursued us relentlessly, slithering tendrils of sound infecting our dreams and serving as unending reminders of our vulnerability. The forest, once a source of wonderment, became a confining cell whose borders were not defined by physical parameters, but by an icy dread that gnawed at our sanity. The shadowy entities had claimed us, their eerie gaze seeping through the veil of darkness and branding our souls. The residual metallic odor that hung in the air was a macabre herald, a grim promise of the impending doom that lay ahead. It clung to our nostrils, an unshakable reminder of the horror we were about to face. A frosty certainty settled in my bones, its chilling grasp as paralyzing as the terror it carried with it. I knew that it was only a matter of time before their mirthful echoes would return, not from some distant place this time, but directly into our ears like a cacophony of despair. And then it happened. Their laughter returned, louder and more sinister than before. It pierced through the silence of the night like a jagged knife through flesh. Our sanity slowly slipped away as we became submerged in an ocean of dread. An unbearable pain seared through my body, as if a thousand needles were piercing my skin at once. My vision blurred, and I heard my own blood-curdling scream echoing off into oblivion. I fell to the cold ground beneath me, my body convulsing as the life ebbed from me. My last memory was seeing them emerge from the shadows, their grotesque figures illuminated by moonlight, and their laughter now a victorious chant over our demise. Their laughter continued to ring in my ears until everything went black. I was just another offering, a sacrificial lamb led to the slaughter on that unholy altar hidden deep within the whispering pines of Croatan Forest. Shadows of the Blue Ridge, the rugged peaks of the North Carolina mountains stretched endlessly, a jagged silhouette against the sky. The dense foliage that blanketed their slopes blocked out all but the faintest rays of sunlight, casting the forest in an eerie green glow. Dark whispers of a haunting presence echoed through the towering trees warning travelers to steer clear of this mysterious land. But Rebecca, a young photographer seeking inspiration, 
boldly ventured into the labyrinth of shadows armed with only her camera and a brave heart. Rebecca's feet sunk into the soft ground as she followed a winding path, the smell of pine and damp earth assaulting her senses. As she snapped photos, capturing the mystique and magic of this forbidden place, she sensed the weight of centuries-old secrets bearing down on her. As she hiked deeper into the wilderness, her footsteps resounded through the silent groves, stirring the dormant spirits out of their slumber. And as dusk painted the sky in shades of red and blue, Rebecca stumbled upon a secluded clearing bathed in an eerie luminescence. A feeling of unease and dread settled in her stomach as she approached a towering ancient oak tree. Its thick, gnarled roots stretched out like twisted serpents, gripping the ground, the massive trunk standing tall and proud. As Rebecca gazed up at its majestic branches, a cool breeze rustled through the leaves, whispering secrets that sent shivers down her spine. Within the gnarled belly of the old tree, a time-worn camera sat, its metal shell corroded and lens fractured from what seemed like decades of neglect, yet it pulsed with an inexplicable energy that beckoned Rebecca closer, as if bound by an invisible chain. As her fingers grazed its cold surface, a shiver crept up her spine, and the woods were swallowed by a suffocating fog that blotted out any trace of the path ahead. Undeterred by the sudden shift in the atmosphere, Rebecca pressed on, drawn deeper into the forest's heart by an enigmatic allure to uncover whatever enchantments lay dormant within this forsaken realm. Her hands quivered as she rummaged through her backpack in search of her flashlight amidst the oppressive darkness of the forest. The only sounds puncturing the deafening silence were hushed whispers that seemed to seep from the earth itself. Upon finding her flashlight and flicking it on, its weak beam offered little resistance against the engulfing gloom. Each step forward sent adrenaline coursing through her veins, yet something anchored her to the bewitched clearing. Her gaze fell upon the antiquated camera again, nestled amongst moss-cloaked stones, its shattered lens catching fragments of light. Rebecca was enchanted by a rare opportunity to capture elusive spirits that had made the woods their home. A momentary wave of fear held her back before she picked up the camera, its unfamiliar weight unsettling in her grasp. As she pushed down on the shutter button, Reality convulsed around her with a brilliant flash of light. The trees thrashed violently under an unearthly power that swept Rebecca into its embrace. When tranquility finally reclaimed control over chaos, all that was left was an abandoned camera with its lifeless lens void of any reflection. Rebecca had vanished without a trace. The eerie silence draped over the cursed glade persisted as days bled into weeks. The forest's secret remained locked away until an unsuspecting hiker discovered the forsaken artifact. As he developed the film, a chilling image emerged in the last frame. Rebecca's face contorted in terror, surrounded by shadowy figures reaching out from an unseen realm. The whispers among the trees grew more pronounced, spinning tales of a doomed spirit trapped within the haunted photograph, destined to roam the forest trails for eternity. The tale of Rebecca's sudden disappearance spread like a plague among the locals, igniting both fear and intrigue. Despite relentless searches through the maze-like woodland trails, all efforts proved fruitless. As hope dwindled into despair over time, the ancient woods continued to guard its mysteries. The story of the ghostly glade and its spectral camera became a bone-chilling legend whispered around crackling fires on dread-filled nights. But unbeknownst to them all, Every time the tale was told, Rebecca's phantasmal image in the final photo altered ever so slightly, her terrified expression morphing into one of sinister satisfaction, as if she had become part of the very entities she sought to capture. Her horrifying legacy loomed like a dark cloud, a chilling warning to those who dared to step foot into the rugged and treacherous landscape of North Carolina's mountains. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Thank you for watching.